Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today I want to cover a little bit of Kerbal Aerodynamics. So, this is a very simple aircraft. It has a single structural wing arranged at 90 degrees to the hull. And I have control surfaces before and or before and aft of it. I purposely did not attach the control surfaces to the rear of the wing because I'm going to be adjusting the wing sweep in this and showing how it changes in both the stock aerodynamics model and the Ferrum aerodynamic model. Now, I have a single turbojet and I am able to make this thing fly at about 186 meters per second. Now, that's of course because I'm keeping it low in the atmosphere. Also, at this altitude, I can turn pretty hard there. Look, it kind of pops up around 6, 7, 8 Gs, basically. Now, other than the obvious turbojet here, this is supposed to represent uh, like a World War II fighter with straight wings. Of course, as aerodynamics got better understood, swept wings became the norm, and in this case, you can fly an aircraft with swept wings. What I've done is I've just used the rotation tool to sweep these wings back. And in real-world aerodynamics, this would help me uh, go faster because it would reduce the drag once I get uh, into the transonic region. Unfortunately, this thing kind of just caps out at 186 again because Kerbal Space Program doesn't really model that. Furthermore, when I perform the turn, I'm only able to turn at about 5 Gs. The lift from the wings has been reduced, but the drag has more or less stayed the same. Now, going to extremes... You can sweep those wings all the way back in default Kerbal Space Program. And, well, what happens? Well, we, of course, we throttle up to speed, pull up the gear. We have to be moving a lot faster to get off the runway here. And you can see the angle of attack that I'm having to pull is significantly higher here compared to what I was doing in the previous hulls. It's almost like those wings aren't providing any lift. And despite being swept as far back as they will let me, I can't really get any faster than the other designs. Furthermore, if I attempt to turn with this thing, I can barely manage 3 to 4 G. So we've really took a big performance hit here for essentially zero gain. And at this point, I really have to admit that I made a big mistake in a previous video. And a commenter, Kasua, he was the guy that pointed out well, what I was getting wrong and what I didn't understand about Kerbal Aerodynamics. Now, just for example, I've swapped the wing in completely the opposite direction. The aircraft flies well with exactly the same performance. And it turns out that in the default Kerbal Space Program Aerodynamics model, if you turn the wings at 90 degrees to the airflow, they will provide essentially zero lift. They will provide lift if you end up side slipping because that's the way the air is designed to move across the wing. So I can prove this. I can take exactly the same plane, take off the wings, and guess what? It flies just fine in those tiny little control surfaces that I added in for for control, yeah, there it goes here, it's just like a missile. In fact, I think it flies slightly better because the wings that I attach to it, they are no longer providing drag. So we can get a little bit faster, just a little bit faster. There, look, 100, 188, yes. So we have actually managed to increase the speed of this by one meter per second. And it still has exactly the same performance during the turns. So yeah, stock Kerbal Space Program does not deal with swept wings correctly. You should use them at their designed orientation, otherwise they will not work. At least until version 1.0, then we'll see if this particular feature is fixed. But what about Ferrum Aerospace? Well, Ferrum Aerospace, I took the same design. The only thing with this design is that uh, you see a couple of different red numbers on my stability uh, measurements. So what I gotta do is grab the wings and make them make them slightly further back. That generally increases stability. As I've pointed out, a lawn dart is an extreme example with the tail at the back. It is in a very stable flight. Now, people actually express incredulity that a lawn dart is a stable aerodynamic body. It is a stable aerodynamic body. It goes perfectly well in a straight line. It will naturally align with the, the airflow and therefore you will never find it going backwards. It will of course end up going straight into the ground, but that is completely unrelated to whether it was on a stable aerodynamic trajectory. Anyway, we're going to perform the same measurements of velocity below 200 meters 
And again, we're going to sweep the wing and see how Ferrum Aerospace behaves. Now, right away, you see Ferrum Aerospace is a lot faster. I'm clocking in at almost 300 meters per second. There we go, 300 meters per second. We are definitely in the transonic region. We are passing through the sound barrier, but I think we're going to top out roughly in the 300... Not, not much faster than this. Yeah, we're definitely still picking up a little bit of speed, but... Or now it's becoming increasingly hard. I'm having to wait increasingly long for my velocity to increase. 364, 65, 66. And you can also see that as I'm trying to maintain my altitude below 200 meters, the small adjustments that I am making to my attitude are causing the G meter to jump up and down, almost up, up above. Whoa, there are nine Gs there. So let's see what happens when I take those exact same wings and sweep them by 45 degrees. Now, I've also adjusted the position of the wings to move them slightly forwards because uh, Ferrum Aerospace does a much better job at modeling this surface and as a result the lift is being translated through the centroid of the wing. I, I presume it's the centroid. It's coming through the middle of the wing anyway. And that means that as they sweep backwards, the lift center of lift moves backwards and the aircraft can actually turn into a lawn dart, right? As I was saying. Anyway, uh, this thing just keeps on going. We're through the transonic region. We're over Mach 1, 370. And you see, the difference in these wings is actually adding 10, 20 meters per second to my top speed. Also, when I right click on the wing, you can see the current drag is about uh, 11 to 12 kilonewtons. Now, we've only reduced the drag on the wings the rest of the aircraft is still generating the same level of drag. But even with that small reduction, we are now over 410, almost four, yeah, 410 meters per second. We are really starting to move. So turning on the visualization of the drag, a lot of the drag is coming from that nose and those little control surfaces. I mean, beyond modeling the wings correctly, Ferrum Aerospace also models drag on all the other parts. And if you'll notice, large parts of the fuselage are essentially shielded by that cockpit there. Now we can pull a quick turn here. Look at the G's going way over the top there and everything holds together, thankfully. So anyway, let's see what happens when we take those wings and we sweep them back a whole 90 degrees. Now, the airflow is running edge on over the wing, but the wing is constructed that way. What does Ferrum Aerospace do? Well, it actually does a much better job. It presumes that the aircraft was designed like that and that the wings should actually provide lift. So it will exchange the span and the cord of the wing because I've reoriented this wing. So instead, we now have two very short wings that have are actually very uh, thick, let's say. So uh, yeah, we're getting through the, the Mach 1 barrier here, almost. It seems to be a lot harder to control this thing. It just seems to oscillate up and down. Uh, but, uh, come on, let me get through Mach 1. I think I'm there. Mach 1, excellent. And 350, 360, 3... So we're... we're not really even doing better than the standard wing configuration here, right? We're not gaining anything by sweeping it so extremely, but at least the wings do provide lift. And yeah, if you look back at that space shuttle wing design vet, uh, tutorial, I did large parts of it all wrong because several of those wing, su wing surfaces are at 90 degrees to the airflow and therefore were providing zero lift. So, I mean, I guess it just made it more like the real space shuttle, right? Anyway, since we're here, we should probably perform a hard turn just to see uh, what else Ferrum does for us. Yeah, look at that. Those little front wing surfaces came off. So Ferrum does make the aircraft faster. It makes things a lot more fun. However, it does have a reputation for causing wings and stuff to fall off. So I thought I'd tag on this little moment that I discovered during uh, testing. Yeah, um, lost both wings on my aircraft. What can I do? It's not even Jebediah flying. Well, the obvious thing to do... <laughs> we're, we're actually... We still have control over this thing. It is the proverbial lawn dart. If I try to fly this, it will probably... Kill, it'll probably kill me. Uh, the, I'll probably be unable to keep the nose up. But instead, what I did was I pointed it straight up, throttled down, and then let gravity bring me into a slow descent 
in reverse because I know I could balance on that engine. It's just a challenge to balance on this engine. I also opened the landing gear because the landing gear will generate drag and that might offset the tendency for those wings at the back to flip me around if I go too far, if I go too fast or if I allow my angle of attack to deviate too far from the um, ideal airflow basically, yeah. Uh, but yeah, with a bit of work and a lot of patience, this took a really long time. I was able to bring this down towards the surface of the ocean. And you can see my velocity, vertical speed really started getting a little hard to control at this point. But we're here and we touch down. Success. Look, even Jebediah would have been proud of that particular maneuver. Yes, Ferrum Aerospace definitely makes Kerbal Space Program a lot more fun. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.